Back at NAB 2018, a Chinese company called Zcam showcased the second iteration of their Kickstarter funded Micro Four Thirds video camera, the Zcam E2. The $2000 price 4K cinema camera caught a lot of attention because of its promising specs. The camera started shipping in October 2018 and has been selling like hotcakes since then. But is it really worth getting a $2000 Micro Four Thirds camera? I've been using mine for a year now and here's my detailed review of the Zcam E2. Hey everyone, this is Neer from Techie Tech Tech and let's jump in. Let's start off with the design and dimensions. The Zcam E2 is a small but dense camera and weighs around 757 grams. At first glance, it looks a bit weird if you're coming from DSLRs and mirrorless line of cameras, but if you've seen some REDs and REs, you'll get used to it in no time. Here's a quick size comparison of the E2 with the Sony A7S. Initially, I was kind of amazed at how small the camera was in real life and that too without a cooling fan. Yes, that's right, the Zcam E2 does not have a cooling fan. We'll talk about more in the chip and processor section. Here are the exact dimensions of the E2. The Zcam E2 is made out of aluminium except for the audio and storage plastic flaps. So, the in-hand feel of the camera is remarkable. It feels like a premium camera. Moreover, the dimensions are something that takes a little time to get used to, especially if you're used to the regular DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. But I personally love the way it fits into my hands, you know. Let's talk about those quarter inch thread mounts on the E2. There are 9 thread mounts on the camera, which gives plenty of real estate for rigging the camera without a cage. Although a cage is recommended if you're a run and gun shooter, I don't use a cage because most of my shoots are indoors and in controlled environments. The Zcam E2 features a micro four thirds wide dynamic range CMOS sensor with a sensor size of 19 by 13 mm. You might think that the sensor size is a bit small to be called a cinema camera, but things have certainly changed in the past few years considering the fact that brands like Panasonic and Blackmagic have released a micro four thirds sensor cameras with incredible image quality. We talked about the Zcam E2 not having any cooling fan or even fan grills for airflow. So how does it manage to shoot in such high resolution and frame rates without getting hot as a tungsten light? Well, the secret lies in the processing chips used by the company. I'll try my best not to get too technical about this. There are basically two types of chips that are used in modern camera systems or in general modern devices the ASIC and the FPGA. The FPGA field programmable gate array are integrated circuits that can be field programmed to work as per the intended design. Basically, it can be programmed to work as a microprocessor, a graphics processor, or as an encryption unit, or all these three at once. It's like that one guy in the team that's an all-rounder. The other kind of chips are the application-specific integrated circuits, or ASIC. As the name suggests, they're designed for one sole purpose and they perform the same function throughout their whole operating life. The most common example is the CPU on our phones. Remember that one guy in accounts who's really good with numbers? Yeah, that's the ASIC chip in this case. So, the Zcam E2 uses the ASIC chips unlike other cameras that use FPGA. The primary reason being the high consumption power of the FPGA chips. More power consumption generates more heat and that's why the E2 uses the ASIC chips. The devices powered by FPGA chips functionalities can be upgraded significantly as compared to the ASIC chips. The ASIC chips can only be upgraded by software but only to a certain extent. In simple terms, the hardware is locked but can only be upgraded with software to a certain extent. In case you want to learn more about these chips, have a quick look at this comparison image. 
Moving on to the part you've been waiting for the most, the shooting capabilities of the E2. The Zcam E2 can shoot in a bunch of widely used frame rates and resolutions and that too in different encoders ranging from H.264 to ProRes and even the RAW format. To sum things up, here are some of the supported resolutions and frame rates. Like I said, the Zcam E2 supports a bunch of different codecs, so here's a quick look at those. After a recent firmware update, a low noise 4K mode and a Super 16 resolutions were added to the E2. After using the Zcam E2 for a year now, here are my thoughts regarding the shooting capabilities. The file sizes are as big as you would expect on the ProRes codec, but the H.26 files are amazing in terms of image quality and efficiency. A quick note here, while shooting in high frame rates, you're logged on to the H.26 format only and I haven't had any issues with it, especially in 4K. But the 240fps and 200fps in 1080p do have a minimal amount of moire present in the footage. And when you're shooting in 1080p in slow motion, there's a fair amount of line skipping happening in the footage as well. I guess that's just a caveat of the full sensor readout. But this doesn't happen when you're shooting in 4K at 120 frames per second or even 160 frames per second. The result is clean footage with wonderful skin tones. I personally prefer to shoot in the 4K 120fps because of the full sensor readout and premium image quality. Honestly, it's mind blowing at this price point. Also, when you're shooting in 4K 160fps, you're limited to the 2.4 is to 1 aspect ratio, you're getting an extra 40 frames but you won't be able to shoot in the 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. If you're going for the cinematic look, only then I would recommend shooting in 160 frames per second or you're either going to export the project in full HD. Here's a pro tip, before shooting, always plan out your storage according to the codec and frame rates you'll be shooting in. The ProRes and the Zero file sizes are really big and it's highly likely that you will run out of storage way before than you planned for. Let's talk about the dynamic range of the E2. The Zcam team claims a 15 stops of dynamic range with WDR mode turned on and 13 stops in Z-Log and flat profiles. That's a lot for a micro four thirds sensor at this price point. If you want to see a more detailed test of the dynamic range of the Zcam E2, I would suggest that you have a look at this thorough test where they use the DSC Labs Xyla21 backlit transmissive chart. It's a purely mathematic way to check the actual dynamic range of the cameras. You can refer to the link in description for that test. As for the my opinion of the dynamic range of the E2, I would prefer to show you the actual footages and let you be the judge of that. Except for the slow motion footages, all these footages were shot in ProRes 422 and you can feel free to download those from the link in description. Alright, so let's talk about the image quality. The Zcam E2 can shoot in a bunch of different picture profiles and the image quality out of all those profiles is brilliant. I mostly shoot in Rec. 709 because of the soft and not so contrasty look that I get. One thing a user needs to keep in mind is to expose the footage properly for each of these profiles. If you're coming from Canon, Sony, Nikon, then there's a slight learning curve to get the perfect exposure on this camera. I found that overexposing by a stop or two resulted in better footage. But it's highly recommended that you use the end monitor scopes and false color to get the best exposure. Zcam also provides a bunch of different plugins and software to get you the most out of your footage, like the Zcam color correction plugin and the denoiser plugin. We'll talk about more in the second part of the review. So let's dive into the different color profiles by Zcam E2. All these footages are available for download from the link in description. So the first profile is the Rec. 709. As mentioned earlier, I shoot most of my videos in Rec. 709, primarily because of the good skin tones and neutral colors. It's really fun to grade and the details are remarkably good. If exposed properly, the footage straight out of the camera is fairly usable. Moreover, the Rec. 709 footage requires a very minimal amount of grading too. The color science of this sensor is really good considering the brand's age. Alright, let's talk about the Z-Log or the Z-Log 2. It basically gives you more space to capture those highlights and shadows with up to 13 stops of dynamic range. 
The image quality is pretty good and grading log footage has always been exciting. But the key to getting the best out of Zcam E2 while shooting in Zlog 2 is to overexpose your footage. Zlog has been designed to incorporate highlight rollover. Since the sensor uses analog gain for processing noise, you get a very minimal amount of noise even at high ISO levels. In simple terms, overexpose your footage but don't clip your highlights. Let's talk about the flat profile. In the flat profile, the camera applies a Rec. 709 LUT on your Zlog 2 footage but the noise performance is better. It's fun to experiment with but I would recommend shooting in Zlog and then grading it in post. There's a WDR or Wide Dynamic Range mode present on the Zcam E2. This mode basically lets you achieve even more dynamic range by letting you squeeze out the extra number of stops. It requires you to overexpose your footage by an extra 2 to 3 stops by either increasing the ISO or going with wider f stops. Time to get a bit technical over here. The Zcam E2 uses QBC HDR or quad bay coding, which basically shoots the footage at two different shutter speeds to get highlights and shadows right in one frame. This method is one of the most efficient methods to shoot HDR footage, which has motion with minimal amount of ghosting. In simple terms, the E2 uses two different shutter speeds, a slower shutter speeds for the shadows and a higher shutter speeds for the highlights. Just a quick heads up, when a fast moving object gets into the highlight as well as in the shadow zone at the same time, you'll notice some video artifacts. So it's recommended to use a shutter speed of 1x200 or more to avoid getting video artifacts. The HLG image quality of the E2 is fairly good and it does provide you a bit more dynamic range than the Rec. 709. Also the low light performance is better. I personally don't shoot in the HLG profile though. But here are some samples. Alright, so let's talk about the skin tones. Skin tones are one of the most important aspects of a camera, especially if it's being called a cinema camera. But luckily the skin tones out of the Rec. 709 footage are remarkably good. The skin tones are soft and lightly contrasted, which are a bit on the warmer side. The highlight roll off is also smooth and the overall skin looks breathtaking in certain lighting conditions. Moving to color bit depth, the Zcam E2 can shoot in 10 bit H.265 and ProRes and 8 bit in H.264 without any issues. But I've got to say, the 4K footage in the 10 bit is mind blowing. It feels like a Panasonic GH5S on steroids. I've used the GH5 for a few months and the 10 bit footage was impressing enough for a micro four thirds camera for me. But the Zcam E2 took it even further with 4K at 120 frames per second in 10 bit and the ProRes support. This is one of those things that you can only experience while editing. It has really made my editing workflow better and more enjoyable. If you're good at color grading, then I highly recommend the Zcam's color correction plugin for FCP, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. It really makes the grading process more easier and enjoyable. Alright, so let's talk about the ISO and noise performance. The Zcam E2 features a micro four thirds CMOS sensor with a 10.2 megapixel resolution. It features a dual native ISO sensor with three different settings of auto, high and low. Here's a quick look at the ISO ranges with respective profiles. 
Before the 0.86 firmware update, the native ISOs were 160 and 800, but after the update, it was upgraded to 800 and 2500 respectively. During my testing, I noticed that the noise performance at ISO 2500 with the high end was far better as compared to any other ISO levels. As mentioned earlier, it is advised to overexpose your footage while field stops while recording in Zlog and WDR profiles. Just make sure to not clip your highlights. The Zcam E2 works on ETTR and it's advised to use false color instead of just relying on scopes. Here are some pictures that might help you clear this up. In short, the ISO and noise performance of the Zcam E2 sensor is exceptionally good. The low light performance of the E2 is clearly better than any other Micro Four Thirds camera including the GH5 and other Olympus cameras. As for the noise reduction, I prefer to use the Zcam's own noise reduction plugin for this thing, but the DaVinci Resolve Studios noise reduction feature works very well too. The rolling shutter effect in the E2 is fairly noticeable and one might say that it's quite similar to the one seen on GH5. It's not good but it's definitely not worse than the shutter effect on other common Micro Four Thirds CMOS sensors. Well, this is it for the part 1 review of the Zcam E2 and let me know if you have any questions regarding the camera. And I'll see you in the next part of the E2 review where we'll take an in-depth look at the Zcam app, the audio and video monitoring interfaces along with the customer and community support and the competition landscape. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.